Necromancy is a new skill for RuneScape and a new standalone combat style. Necromancy is a non-elite new combat skill that goes up to level 120, and for free to play it goes up to level 20. It's the first new combat style ever released in RuneScape. It's the fourth combat style, and it sits independently outside of the original three combat styles. The combat level goes from level 138 up to level 152. The main antagonist of the Necromancer skill is the first Necromancer. A powerful, ancient necromancer who's resurfaced time and again through history, and this time they've taken a special interest in you. The first necromancer has attacked Gilnor's underworld, the city of Um, where it's enthralled its spirits. The player must work with old and new characters to master necromancy on the journey that will take you across Gilnor, across the city of Um, to help you free the spirits and defeat the first necromancer. Necromancy has been designed in a way where it is accessible to all player types. If combat's something you'd like to do more of, but at the moment you find the barrier to entry is a bit high for the existing styles, then necromancy is a perfect way to actually get started on it. Not only will there be lots of tutorials about how to use necromancy abilities and to do combat in general, but with the upgrade system that we have, you'll be able to upgrade your way through the tiers or into tier 90 by doing necromancy narrative story content. On the other hand, for players who take a more active approach to combat, necromancy will reward you for your skill and your knowledge and your activity. As you level through the skill, you'll get access to more complex and challenging encounters. That's one of the key elements of necromancy, is making sure that it's approachable, it has those deep systems for those who want it, but it is rewarding for you to master at the end up. Even though necromancy is a combat skill, if you don't want to engage with combat at all, you will still be able to level it out of combat using rituals. Rituals are a skilling component of necromancy, where you can just do rituals all the way to level 120. For us on Necromancy, community is extremely important. We've worked with content creators, brought them into the office, got them to play Necromancy, given their feedback to make sure that before release, Necromancy is as good as it can be. This isn't a one and done release. We're gonna continue taking on the player feedback. We want to make sure that the skill is as enjoyable for our wider player base. We want the community to be involved heavily with this. Necromancy is a brand new combat style that features its own new equipment, weapons, incantations, and abilities. Necromancy sits outside the combat triangle. This means it's neither weak nor strong against magic, ranged, or melee. The Necromancer's main hand weapon, the Death Guard, is required to use Necromancy abilities. This is where you'll be mainly using your abilities to deal damage from afar. While you also have the Spirit Lantern, the offhand, which is required to conjure creatures from the underworld, such as skeleton warriors, putrid zombies, or ghostly wraiths. The conjure spirits only last for a certain amount of time during combat, but you want to try and make sure that you keep them alive for as long as you can, because as they progress through combat, their combat potential increases and they'll be able to do more and more damage. Your necromancy abilities, such as your conjures or even just your regular attacks, will consume adrenaline. However, we also have incantations, which will require necromancy runes. One of the incantations available to you is Bone Shield. This allows you to use defensive abilities without requiring a shield. We are also introducing four new runes, the Bone Rune, the Spirit Rune, the Flesh Rune, and the Miasma Rune. These are all required for necromancy incantations and can be crafted in the underworld. While some abilities are unlocked just from leveling, Others are only unlocked via our new system known as Talents. As you engage in necromancy combat, you will earn talent points. By performing rituals, you will gain access to more talents. As you gain access to more talents, you will have to make a choice about what you want to unlock now. But once you've mastered the skill, you'll have unlocked everything. In necromancy, there's a brand new way to upgrade your equipment. We don't want to waste your time by making low tier equipment because you'll be blasting through those levels quite quickly. So within Necromancy, you can upgrade the very first piece of equipment you get given after the tutorial. This equipment goes from level one to level 90. It is not as simple as going to the Grand Exchange and buying it for yourself. You have to go through the tasks and earn it before you can wear it. After level 90 is the standard set of affair in terms of PVM equipment. So if level 95 will drop from the first Necromancer boss. We've designed a toolkit for you with the abilities within Necromancy, and we want you to master them. A lot of your existing items and skills will also benefit you in Necromancy. Things like your amulets, your rings, your potions, and even your prayers. As you can expect with all other combat styles, over time we will be adding to this, whether it's new abilities or equipment that changes the way you play.
In necromancy, you have complete freedom in how you want to level it. We want to give players the choice of how to train necromancy. They can train it through combat and through rituals, the skilling method. This allows players to be able to choose more lean forward or laid back gameplay. Often necromancy is portrayed as an evil art, but in the world of Gilinor, the player has a history of working with the dead sometimes. So the player has to learn how to work with the dead to have them ally and join your fight against the first necromancer. When you first arrive in the city of Um, it will be lifeless. Over time, as you become more powerful, you'll be repopulating the city with various dead, primarily through the use of communion rituals. This will grant you progression in the Well of Souls, which you can use to unlock new abilities. There are 12 different ritual recipes you can perform, each requiring different components, a different focus object, and each providing different rewards. Here you build ritual components. These consist of light sources, such as candles, and glyphs around a chosen focus object. All rituals will give XP. Some of them will also give crafting materials, which can be used to upgrade your necromancer's equipment or craft reagents. There are a few different ways you can talk about the narrative of the necromancy skill. Of course, there is going to be the story for everybody training to take the skill out into the world, to fight the various monsters and the bosses, to perform Slayer and Reaper tasks, and just to level up from 1 to 120. But the story of the first necromancer is also a huge part of the skill update. The first necromancer's ultimate ambition is to break the cycle of life and death, to control all of the souls of Um. You could see him being a counterpart, a mirror to death. In order to break the cycle, all life on the surface must cease, all must die. To master necromancy, the player is going to have to spend a lot of time in the city of Arm, building up their own allies in the world of the dead. But also, they'll take their newfound necromancy skills back up to the surface above and use them to fight foes old and new. So the early quests will teach the player the fundamentals of necromancy combat, rituals, and runecrafting. As you free more spirits from the thrall of the first necromancer, you yourself will grow in power. And then as you unlock more of this power, you'll gain access to battles and additional quests. And then all of this is building up to a final confrontation, a boss fight versus the first necromancer himself. It was fundamental to us to make sure the necromancy was designed based on learnings from the past and built for the future. The amount of work that's gone into necromancy from the entire RuneScape team and across disciplines has been immense. It is visually stunning. It is a city to die for. We've got new bosses, we've got new goodies, and ultimately players get to become a powerful, badass necromancer. Above all else, to me, necromancy is going to be that communal experience again. It's going to bring all players together with a new skill in this new city to interact with, to learn together and to have fun. The launch of necromancy is just the beginning. We're going to continue to expand and evolve it over time. There's something here for everyone. There's something here for the top end bosses, something for the casual players, something for the skillers, something for the story players. This is your chance to play RuneScape in a whole different way.